Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Behind the Bash. I do believe this is our fourth episode. My name is Devin Steele, Program Director of Hot 107.9 here at Radio 1 and uh, one of the organizers, one of the producers um, of uh, Birthday Bash every year. Uh, my name is Gil Jones, Director of Marketing and Promotions for Radio 1 Atlanta, one of those being Hot 107.9. Um, and I'm also one of the producers for the Birthday Bash ATL 2024. You're the, you're the CFO of Birthday Bash. Yeah, yeah it, it was listen. Birthday Bash Jesus last episode. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> exactly. Man, what we were gave him a million teasers last episode, and uh, the show is over just to let you know you know not the date to show but we're a couple of days past the show most definitely everything is sunk in man what an incredible uh night where do you put it on your birthday bash list we always talk about the list everybody comes in here and we talk about your top five top three favorite birthday bashes where do you put right. that on your list gil oh that's put me on the spot uh i'll probably put this birthday bash at number overall number three or mm -hmm. four but Probably number one. It has one of the moments was the number one moment yeah. of my birthday bash. Overall, three or four, but definitely had the top moment in my birthday bash. Yeah, uh, my birthday bash career. Yeah, a lot of people don't. Um, you know, one thing we we talk about all the time amongst ourselves and in the industry, in the business, in the radio circles, in the um, you know record side circles is this is the last we do the last of the locally produced um, radio station concerts. Yeah. This is yeah, it. It means we don't rely on any big company to get talent. We book our own talent. We, correct. Of course, I mean, we don't hang lights and right, right, right. boards. But. I mean, production-wise, we, yeah. we do, you know, go out and get try to get the best production people. But, uh, yeah, it's it's all us. And, you know, staffing it and, and getting talent for it and creating running shows and just every little detail, It's it's a core – three or four, and then probably at our maximum is probably about ten mm. of us. Um, but, yeah, it's – and then you keep in mind, it's us doing that while doing everything else we have to do right, right. with radio and all our other events and in the community and this and that. So it's definitely a task. Uh, um, when you're doing it and you're leading up to it, you're like, you're like, man, why the hell am I doing this? Right. And then when when it's over, you're like, damn, I can't believe I did this. Yeah. You know, so – this year, this is this was my first, my fourth birthday bash. Um, twenty one at Georgia State, the, the COVID year, the little baby headlined in the rain. There were twenty two thousand people out there. Yeah. Second year with Kodak was locked up. Gunner was still uh, unparoled. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. Exactly. Um, last year, which was a which was the uh, twenty one Savage year, and this year with the lotto, um, with the lotto year, and we talk about this all the time. Like you know, and I'm not saying this for sympathy or for our flowers, but it's like. I think this year really kicked our ass, man. You I mean, know this I mean? year was – this year logistically and just, you know, trying to put the show together uh, was definitely the hardest one I've ever had to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then the week of was by far the <sighs> most difficult week. Uh, just it was just very, very difficult uh, yeah. when you have – you just had so many different elements – so much information coming in late. People don't know. I mean, people don't, well, people don't know, and some people do know. You know, we're putting a putting together birthday bash in the middle of a industry shift, mm. um, and so you might have artist agreements with one label. Two weeks later, that label doesn't exist. Yeah, um, and so it, it it made it difficult on us in regards to just you know getting in contact with different artists that we've already agreed upon, but. Now, you know, circumstances have changed. Not money or anything like that, though. Just contact people, and and they're not, you know, the artists are learning new people yeah, that they they're running not, in. They might not be receptive to the new folks, to the new that, folks. that they've been dealing yeah, with. Yeah, that so they've been dealing with. So we had to, you know, we had to overcome those hurdles yeah. kind of like in the middle of the of planning Birthday Bash. Uh, and then, you know, uh, like I know we're going to talk further, we had a, a very, very enthusiastic headliner who – um who's from Atlanta, who took this show very, very serious and personal. Yeah. But, you know, when they take it that in that level, that there comes a lot more logistical uh, issues that got to be handled, a lot more conversations, a lot more special guests, which lead into a lot more this and a lot more that and a lot more <laughs> this and a lot more you that. <laughs> and then you, you're, you're looking up like, yo, man, what the hell is going on? Yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was definitely – 
it was a year to remember. I was I just told somebody the other day. I was like, I learned more. This would be birth. This it was number seven for me, and number seven, I learned more on number seven than I did the previous six. I definitely took some years off my life. This yeah, year most definitely with yeah, that one. You know definitely. what I mean? I hate to be that way, but at the same yeah. time, I mean, it's a lot and it's it's stressful and it's not just. We've talked about this on other episodes. It's not just the stress of pulling off a show, but it's, you know, you try to be everything to everybody, and you're never going to do that with Birthday Bash. You know, I remind everybody constantly that Birthday Bash is about, it's about an idea, it's about a concept, it's about the show. This was the 28th year Correct. that there's been a Birthday Bash concert in the middle of one of the busiest touring summers. You got <laughs> right, right. You got uh, Megan and Glow that just came back again for a third time. You got six right. Usher dates. You got Chris Brown doing multiple nights. Three dates. Future and and uh, and and Metro, you yep. got um, twenty one. Yeah, Savage is on tour. Savage. So there was like several other major t- every Gunna, tour. Gunna, the Gunna, Gunna tour. Hit. Yeah, that you know, and it takes you know, Atlanta is a special place, and yeah. Atlanta comes out. But it's amazing that all these shows can sell out and people support it, and it's it's a beautiful thing. It helps you sleep well at night. Yeah, to most know definitely. That people do want to come out. Yeah, and support like, what you do. You know, like everybody knows, like. Um, you know, when it comes to birthday bash, it's very personal for everyone. You know what I'm saying? And Hot 1079 as a brand is very, very personal to me. And so I'm the one, you know, if you're if you're blocked on Hot 1079, I blocked you. Um, because I'm the one that um, <laughs> when I, you know, when we post we put stuff out there, it's always a bunch of haters that's going, you know, hate. Oh, why this and why that and why uh, yeah, this course, and why that? Course. You know what I'm saying? And um, so we we take it personal. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We try to accommodate everybody and everything. Yeah. But yeah, keep in mind, Hot 1079 is a legacy station. You you got kids at 16 listening to Hot, and you got motherfuckers at 50 listening to Hot. Yeah. It, it, you only can do but yeah. so much in the show. But we try to, I I, I, I commend us for putting on a, uh, always putting on a really good show that at any age group you can leave and say, yo, you know what, that was dope. Like, that was, man, that, yo, I could tell that was for me. That was my experience. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had a, a, a four, I think, I think he's like 45, 46. He was like, man, yo, listen, bro, I love Killer Mike, I love Oont Camp, and I love Boosie. He was like, I got to see three really good artists that I enjoy. Facts. To me, that's a win for me. Yep, yeah, right. For, for, not for me, for us. That's a win. You know what I'm saying? That was a 45-year-old. Then I looked at the recap video, which I got to see. Well, I think I showed it to you yesterday. But it's the young end saying, man, I love uh, Lotto. Man, yeah. I love Rob Fortnite. Man, I love Skiller. So it's like, man, I think we do a really good job at making sure that the audience leaves being fulfilled. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's not even the artists they don't like. We try to put good artists that put on good shows. We try to educate the artists on what to expect, how the stage would look, how to, so they can put on a good show. So yeah. even if you don't know the music, you can still appreciate what they did. And not to mention, a lot of it is foreshadowing for us. Uh, one of the things that we did, I think, a better job this year, uh, kind of overall before I, I kind of want to put the artists out there. And a lot of people that miss the show that go, oh, man, you know, damn, I missed Usher, 21 Savage. I missed Summer Walker. I missed Mariah the Scientist. I missed all these different pop-out artists. You know what I mean? But um, we, we're going to do – we're going to put it in movie form again, and we're going to show it back. And we're going to invite Atlanta to come out. It'll yeah, be very definitely. limited. Uh, we did an amazing job of – shout out to our digital um, team. We did an amazing job. And we can talk about that, the, 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 the imprint and, and how much of an impact that it had um, over the last – you know, I mean, it's still going, you right? Know what I mean, no, especially it's, coming it's, off it's insane coming man. off BET. But um, you know, we had we had to do a lot of foreshadowing when we're talking about the show. It may be an artist that may have one song out at the moment, right? Um, you know, it's Skiller Baby, it's Rob Four Nine. You know, yeah. these these guys have huge followings, and at the moment in February when we're talking about this, it's like they got a song and a half, but they right. have a rabid fan base. Exactly, exactly. No, like you you hit the nail on the head, man. I, I know, like. I can tell you now, I think, I, you know, we were talking about it yesterday. I'm looking at, and I'm, I'm probably going to harp on this more than anything. So I'm looking at, I remember this one comment on Instagram mm. was like, it was a Rob for nine video in Des Dior. And this lady was like, she put on there, oh, these people, nobody even knows who they are. Hot 1079 didn't even tag the artist on the video. And I went, once again, if you, if you, if you get a response from Hot 1079 on Instagram, it's me. Right. No shame, it's me. And I said, well, we don't have to tag them because m- the audience knew who they were. And she said, well, I didn't know who they were. And then do you know what the most 
streamed light video is. That three or four seconds three around or four, four nine with her on stage, which is sure. random. It's random as hell. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Now, and it's all positive. It's right. all yeah, yeah. that his fans, his artists being yeah. like, oh, my God. It, either I missed it. Yeah. I saw it. I got there too late. I yeah. can't believe I missed it. Yeah. Or the women talking about how good he looks. Or the dude talking about how sexy Des Dior looks. Right. So I'm just saying that to say the show has something for everybody in there. And when right. we put a Rob 4 9 on there or a Skiller, there's a reason why. Because they do have a fan base and we have the foresight to say, yo, there's some longevity in these artists. You know, and Rob 4 9 is one of those guys, just if you don't know, he's from New Orleans. He has a huge fan base. Um, Father's Day weekend, he does his own weekend, his own show in New Orleans. Correct. Last year, I wanted him on the show. I've been familiar with his following, obviously, with um, you know my connection in New Orleans. And, 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 and this guy is a, you know, he makes dope records. He makes big records. And, and artists love that guy, too. Correct. So, like, like, you know, like you said, to your point, it's a lot of foreshadowing and a lot of statistically looking at, like, what's going on and saying, okay, we have something to balance that off, man. I, I felt really good. Hold on, real quick, Dev, I want to give you another example. Man, Boss Man had one song when we put him on this show. Yep. One song. Now, as a programmer, you can speak on it. How many songs does he have streaming in? So, you know, to your point, but that's one of those things, like, when we booked Boss Man D'Lo, you know, that was a – that was a – not an educated guess because I knew what impact. Right. And you and I kind of jousted on we that. Did. You're like, man, I don't know. I don't know. Right. And I'm right. like, man, dude, I'm telling you, like, watch. And then he here he came with a new project, Mr. Yep. Pot Scraper. Then you had a, you know what I'm saying? I yes. think he had six songs that were all shazamming and streaming in the top ten. Not yeah, to mention exactly. we were lucky enough that was his first Atlanta show. And there yes. were a lot of people. Yeah. And that's a commitment he made to us in a radio station because he missed out on a lot of money. He did. He and did. Atlanta was his tour day. Was his tour Not day. to mention, and you know what I mean, that's, a, that's why relationships in this business, Most that's definitely. why radio will forever thrive. Right. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's why exactly. radio will forever thrive right. because it's about those relationships. But, you know, here's a guy, he walked on stage and it was karaoke. It was Boss Man D-Lo karaoke. It was. And we'll, probably, we'll talk about this like, who, we'll rank. Yeah. Probably piss some people off when we do this, but we'll rank. Yeah. Uh, but, man, yo, Boss Man had a hell of a set. Let, let's go through this for a second. Though. Yeah. I, I just want to kind of talk about this because I was trying to write down everybody that appeared on the show. It was over 30 artists. Like, we promoted. Great. So anything on a radio station that you hear in between the songs is written by me most of the time. Correct. 99.9% .9 of the time. So, you know, a lot of times there is not – any cap when we write these things. Like we said, they're going to be over 30 artists that appear, and that's what Birthday Bash is. Um, you had the winners for Who's Hot and Athlete at the Mic. They did a fantastic job. Two they did. dope events, two dope activations Yo. from two long term sponsors, um, Adidas, um, Athlete's Foot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Most definitely. Like, amazing job. Not to mention contest in Raleigh. Uh, where else Raleigh, Dallas? Dallas, and Atlanta were the the local contests that we had, and yep. and it was a great look. Yep. Why be a famous Sally? Big stage for them, first time doing it. Yes, you know what I mean. Like yeah. you try to get folks on. Somebody has to perform early. Somebody got to perform early. Yeah. But hey, kudos. Yeah, Atlanta, you showed up early though. They sure did. Man, I did not. Yo, in my yo, I've never seen that. I was like, damn, do I hear people cheering already? It's only seven oh seven. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so we had some technical <laughs> issues and some child and some. Some technical challenges throughout the day. Right. Um, Lotto had an elaborate set. Um, she wanted to bring a box Chevy on stage, which we had been trying since 4 in the morning to get on stage. Correct. Um, and they still wanted to sound check. So we opened the doors literally 17 minutes late. 17 right? minutes late. Correct. So math is math. At the end of the day, if we got to be out of somewhere by a certain time, right. you don't get that time back. You don't get you it gotta back. you got to figure it out. Yep. So everything was pushed back at first. We made the time up. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But um, shout out to YB and Famous Sally. To your point, I looked out in the crowd. And people were coming in. I went, turned around, and I swear, 30 minutes later, I looked out in the crowd, and I was like, where did all these people Where did people, people come from? from? It, was, it was, I think we, we strategically, one thing we did, I, me and Devin talked about, um, we got with our graphic designer. We said, hey, man, we need to, we've never done it before, but let's go ahead and put out this lineup now. Yeah. And pretty much just letting people know, hey, these artists are performing in these hours. Mm -hmm. we, we weren't super detailed, like 10.05. No, we yeah, were like yeah. 7, 8, 9, 10. Right. And we put it out, put it out quick. We blasted it via a text blast, hit it, and then we took it down. But we just hit it real quick so people knew. Yeah. People got the memo. And they yeah. knew if that if some of your favorite artists were performing in 7 o'clock hour, you need to be there in 7 o'clock hour. And I give Atlanta kudos because, I mean, I seen the line. I just looked at a recap video, and I seen the line, and I asked them, what time did that line 
get started. He said, I shot that first, and that was at um, 640. Wow. So I was like, damn. Okay, yeah. so they got there. They yeah. got there, so, yeah. And, look, we appreciate all the tags and, and all the hashtags. It's a lot of times we don't we don't see what's going on outside. We don't see what's going on we in don't the concourse. At all. You know, we do yeah. a million walkthroughs and know how our thing's going to flow. Um, man, you got Skiller Baby, came in like a pro, did his thing, jumped oh in the God. crowd. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was a moment. Yeah. Um, he was a, he was a soldier about performing early. Yep. Did um, his R&B song. Sure all, the, did. all the ladies sang with him. Yep. Yeah. You got T Grizzly, brought out Mariah DeSantis. And, and you know, T Grizzly is one of these guys who has, he's got joints. He's got records with high energy. Yes. Being from Detroit. Right. Another guy, he's a pro. Yes. You know what I mean? Pro. He came in. Pro came in. He said, hey, man, all I need is five minutes. I need to change my clothes. Because yeah. th- Devin was in my ear like, yo, no, it was somebody was in my ear like, yo, we need his DJ. I'm yeah. like, yo, we're just getting him in. Yeah. And I was like, hey, we're going straight to the stage. And they were like, he like, can I just change my clothes? I was like, yeah, go ahead and change. Yeah. Don't worry about it. We'll stall him out. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So pro- professional, man. If you 100% have, professional. If you have not seen the interviews um, in our media room backstage, um, shout out to Hennessy. Shout out to DTLR, who had an amazing activation. Yeah. And uh, Saucony, man. I've always been a Saucony mm-hmm. fan. Love those shoes. Uh, now that's TV. Um, yeah, now there's t- TV, and yeah. we appreciate their their partnership as well. But go back and watch those interviews, man, with everybody, with our whole team. So, you know, artists basically would come in the door, Change clothes, chill for a minute. If they had time to, come to the media room. Correct. Do their interview and literally come to stage and right. do their thing. So Yeah, and because we were a little bit tight on time, um, like this is, you know, kudos to our team is that we had to we had to kind of balk on some of that real quick. So, for example, like T. Grizzly, he got there just in time for him to hit the stage. We'll change clothes and hit the stage. So now we have to now yeah. kind of break our security protocol. Yeah. Because they want to get him in the media room. Right. They know how how important Hot 107.9 is. Yeah. And that that sometimes the, your your interview content may go further than your performance content. True. So Good they're point. like, yo, we got to hit the media room. You know what I'm saying? So we were able to, you know, make it work and get him into the media room. And he literally did everyone. Yeah. You know? And that's what, like, to all artists, like, your availability is your biggest asset <laughs> in being an artist. Facts. If you're too cool to do interviews, more than likely, yeah, we're not gonna call you back. More than likely, there's not gonna be opportunities for you. So, like, I just gotta. I know we're talking about T Grizzly. I mean, big up the T Grizzly. Big up to the whole 300 team for, you know, making that work and getting them there and him putting on a hell of a performance. The guys sold 20 million records. Correct. You know what I mean? And yeah. listen, this is Atlanta. It's not Detroit, but you know, there's so many imported folks, and it Birthday Bass is such a national show. Correct. Like. People were losing their shit on there when he was yeah, performing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, And then when your girl came out, when Mariah, oh, yeah, yeah. man, yeah. You know, the other cool thing is, I'm going to tell you, a lot of these artists are, are such pros. Yes, he was running behind, and he came in. And as stage director directing the show from the stage, I'm trying to figure out, you know, the timing is everything. Right. right? And I asked the DJ, I was like, how much more time? How much yeah. time you got? He was like, how much time do you need? In mm, other words, gotcha. how many more songs do you need? Right, us right, to right. Do? We talked about Rob Four Nine and his performance. Incredible, yeah. high energy. Um, you know, you got before we talk about Key Glock in the second part of the show, man. Um, you know, Killer Mike is somebody that we booked super early, um, based on our relationship with Yeah, he was like him. the second artist booked. Yeah. yeah. And we were talking about this on lunch the other day. You know, sometimes it's the right thing to do. Correct. You know what correct, I mean? Correct, correct, correct. Like, you know, Killer Mike doesn't have a million radio songs that, that go up every six weeks. Right. He's not going to put out a Z and mixtapes. But this album that he just won the BET Award for, that he won three Grammys to shut everybody out, is an amazing work yes. of, of, of art and amazing work of music. If you're a Dungeon Family fan, if you got, if you like that you know, true Atlanta sound, that, that's, that's who Killer Mike is. Most definitely. And it, sometimes it's not about, yo, they, don't, they might not have a, a, a big hit on the radio at the yeah. moment. But it's about, now it's our job to expose you to this artist. And Birthday Bass might expose you to something that you ain't think you were going to like. Yeah. Or a performance you didn't think you were going to enjoy. Yeah. And now, I mean, I don't know. I know some people left out of, people, some people that came in there left out of their Killer Mike fans. They didn't, they, yeah. they, they didn't like or dislike them, but they left like, yo, yeah. buddy dope. So, you know what I'm saying? Mission accomplished, man. Yeah. I want to I wanna thank um, Bear, Courtney Seals, and Connor. Man, artists out here. Let me tell you something. If you want to see how to move <laughs> professionally, and Killer Mike's been around the world with Run the Jewels. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's been on massive tours and festivals. Yeah. That guy is the consummate professional. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. They're sticklers for details. 
got a DJ who was playing on 1200s. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Which, which you got to love. You know what I mean? Uh, but if you want to know how to move artists, I'm going to look in the camera and say it. <laughs> and managers, watch Killer Mike and how he moves. You know what I'm saying? How are his folks? But, man, you know, hats off to those guys. Yeah, most I mean? definitely. And, then, most and definitely. then Killer Mike is a guy who's always appreciative and, you know, humble. And he always says it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. But here again, he brought. Goody Mob, yes. most everybody but CeeLo. He yep. brought he brought out Sleepy Brown. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, Dungeon Family was definitely and, and Dungeon Family there deep. Um, you know, rapping. Uh, he brought out uh, Backbone. He brought out you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Slim Cutter, who right. I hadn't I hadn't seen in 20 years. <laughs> yes, in fact, you know what I'm saying. I, when I see Slim, I was like, damn. Yeah. Like, but for me, I was like, yo, that's wow, that's royalty. But you know what I'm but saying? But like we said, but. We painted a picture that was an Atlanta moment. That was an Atlanta moment. And that was a hip-hop moment. Yep. So we created this award. Um, rest in peace for Rico Wade as he passed. We wanted to do something in his name, which we're going to do every year. Every year. And, uh, yep. you know, created this Rico Wade Game Change Award with DTLR. Thank you to them. Um, you know, and it was a great look. And Rico Wade's sons were there. His mom was there. Mom was there. Um, yeah. And um, Mama Wade. Everybody, you know, who's for the most part a part of Dungeon Family, um, a lot of them were there. Big Boy wasn't there, of course. Andre wasn't there. You know what I right. mean? But, you know, Rico Wade's mama, that was her house. That's where the dungeon is. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And anything you've ever listened to uh, from Outcast, from Players Ball, Crumble and Herb, it's Bodie Odie, Dope Delicious, I don't care what it is, Two Dope Boy, you know what I mean? Like, it came out. From the dungeon. From the dungeon. So, mm. for me, like, I, I got a lump in my throat right. from that moment. Yeah, because, yeah. And I have never met Ray before. Gotcha. Gotcha. So for me to have that personal conversation with Ray, and uh, shout out to Orlando McGee, um, yeah. their attorney, you know yeah. what I mean? Super class guy um, yeah, about Atlanta. And that's the thing about Atlanta. Like, Atlanta does and loves Atlanta. Exactly. I think that's what, uh, 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 what's your boy, Apple Music, uh, Ebro said. Oh, Remember? Uh, yeah. He said, he was like, the reason why Atlanta's staying on top, Cause Atlanta love Atlanta, and Atlanta will work with Atlanta. It, it's like it just we just it just the city just works with each other. I gotta you know, and I gotta and we had this conversation offline though. I've had to, I still have to re- reprogram myself because I'm not used to You're that. You're not used to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got gotcha. you. I'm not. And yeah, everything doesn't have to be hard. Right. It doesn't have to be. But when we talk to you know the pause, but go ahead. <laughs> the Wade family, <laughs> you know, talk to Orlando uh, uh, McGee, who's the um, the attorney for the Wade family and does a lot of their stuff and always has, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect. Right. But he was like open arms. Like, I mean, as soon as, soon as you, soon, we was on the phone, you're like, this is what we want to do. He like, of course, right. this is awesome. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. I got it. Let me, let me, let me make the calls. Right. Like they were like, I mean, it was, it was no kind of ego involved or anything. It was like, this is what y'all want to do. We are all for it. Hey, send us the video. We want to take a look at it. And you know, it was like you said, it was easy. Yeah. It was easy. And, and we'll elaborate on it uh, every year. There's some other things that we want to do. Yeah, most um, definitely. That we want to do. So shout out to Killer yeah. Mike, um, Dungeon Family, and um, everybody that came on stage. Of course, you got man, Key Glock. What can you say? The guy, you know, has had an amazing last Glock. 18 months. Yeah, man. In and out. Here's another viral moment. Yeah. That's gone crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Who was that that asked the question? I still that, have no idea who asked the question. So, you know, Key Glock was leaving <laughs> leaving after the show and getting going back to the cyber truck, right? And right. They're like, yo, Glock, yo, Glock. Somebody off camera's right. like, what's one piece of advice that, 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 that Dolph ever told you? Hey, Glock says, get to the money, nigga. Get to the money, it's, but it's at three or four seconds. It, it just it's perfect. It's gonna be a, it's it's already a meme, right? Right? You know right. It, I mean? is, it, it is. It is. And you can all and you just you know like we every day we I mean we miss Dolph. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So to have Glock still, you know, running with that that brand, you know what I'm saying, making Dolph still look good and bigging him up. But when he said it, I swear to you, it sounded like Dolph. Mm. Like I every when I hear it, I'm like, damn, it sounds just like Dolph. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But that's that them three seconds, man. It's it then went viral, and it's like the just the moments you just don't ever know the moments that will you know that will transcend exactly. you know with everybody exactly. You know? And so, then for me, it's it also you know it puts a smile on my face too because shout out to Jeremy Hunt, some of the other guys, the PRE is DJ. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Rocksteady, I not you didn't get get a chance to make it. I miss you, but you know that's a group of Memphis guys. So when I see them, it's almost like a mutual, you know, those are guys yeah. that I've grown up with. It's so funny. For 20 years. Man, it's, it's, 
um, so when Glock comes up the stairs, right, I happen to be on stage at that point. I don't know why, but I was on stage at that point. And it's loud, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But he turns and see you. And y'all don't say anything. Y'all just smile and hug. Yeah. Like, it's just a moment. It was like yeah. a Memphis thing. It was yeah. like, oh, shit, my Memphis got here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it, it was kind of dope to kind of see that, to seeing him go upstairs. It's like, he, like, he didn't even know you would be up there producing the show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he was just kind of like, shit, Devin, what yeah. up? You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, no, I definitely saw the love, uh, you know, that, you know, you all share, especially being from the same city. It was dope to see. Yeah, yeah. his and his performance. You know, his stardom continues to rise. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every single project, every single mixtape, every single, every album. You know yeah. what I mean? And he's, uh, their whole operation. Yeah. Shout out to Daddy O.P.R.E., Travis, everybody over there, man. Always a class act, super professional, super pros. Right, right. Um, you know, you got. You got to say my guy, though. You didn't say my guy. Go ahead. Hey, man, Boosie, man. Yeah. Come I mean, on, listen, man. Listen. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. Listen, Boosie, Boosie is a, boo. Yeah, hey, man. I, I think one of the things about this show, and when we sit down and we talk about it, it's almost like a lineup for a football game. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we try to program, we try to figure it out. Right. Um, and if you get a chance to watch the behind the scenes when we put the movie out, when we book Boosie, we've got some <laughs> great behind the scenes footage in the conversation. I mean, Boosie is Boosie. He's a, it's like Jeezy, it's like Tip. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's yeah. a certain level of respect where you have to start the conversation. Facts. Facts. Because Boosie's going to, and, let me tell you something. If you don't, if you think Boosie is spontaneous, Boosie 100% understands his brand, who he is, and what he's going to bring to the table. Most definitely. He 100%. already knows it. He knows it, and he's he going to let you know it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But he lets you know it in a respectful way, man. And he's just like, like he's another one um, that will like Killer Mike, man. Like, I, I want young artists just to kind of look at him. You know what I'm saying? You're, you see the Boosie on social, but when I say when his business is taken care of, his business is taken care of. A super humble dude. Yeah. Is willing to do anything and everything. You know what I'm saying? As long as he got his money, yeah. what you need from him? Right. You know what I'm saying? His manager, Jay, since the, we called Jay, Jay set it up. Jay, uh, just a super dope dude, super professional, got it done. Anytime we call and say, hey, we probably need Boosie to do this, not a problem. We, we got it done. You know what I'm saying? Just make sure that wire transfer hit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As long as the wire transfer hit, we good. Yeah. So, yeah, like, <clears throat> and literally put on, I, one of the top three performances. I mean, he's you know. just got. He got when we hits. talked about. It, I mean, we you know, Boosie's <laughs> one of our favorite artists. It's like you, you the only probably other person I would put in that category. And you already know what I'm about to say is Jeezy. Jeezy, yeah, yep. yep. Because it, the guy's going to be doing shows forever. Yep. It's a certain level of energy. Yep. That when they came out and at the pinnacle of dropping new material, Southern Records didn't have a lot of energy. Right. Right. So right. Right. Jeezy and Boosie, that whole era. <laughs> That's they right. made record that made you want to fucking get up, dance, jump, talk shit. Like, it gave you that energy. And, Who, and I'm glad you said, yeah, them too. They have them records. I mean, I put, I put Tip in that category. Yeah, I, I definitely put Tip in that category. Tip, yeah. tip, tip has a, but Tip, Tip played both. He did both. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He had a, he had, back and he he had got some laid energy. back but records. He got energy records. Yeah, too, you know, know and he got energy records. Who walked, like, Boosie walked out like a wrestler, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> like who comes out to wipe me down? Wipe me down, bro. Like, it's a cap of probate. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> he, he, he literally skipped on stage to wipe me down. Wipe me down. And people and lost their they shit. They lost their shit. And it's like, and then, boot like, nobody else on stage. Nope. Him, microphone, spotlight, yeah. at the end of the thrust, I'm about to rock this shit. That's what his set was. Yeah. And he rocked it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And he had another one of those viral moments. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, did, I didn't see this until afterwards. There's a lot that I don't see because I'm arguing with people backstage trying right. to get time. I didn't see stage. this one either until our digital team posted right. it. I was like, yo, Boosie is so on brand. Yeah. It's so crazy. What so, was the moment? What was the moment? Yeah. He, he turned to the microphone, <laughs> but it's something he did in the pandemic, yeah, right? right? Exactly. Did it, did it, Put your pussy said, yeah. lips on live. I'll give you a thousand dollars. I'll say what you're saying. Put your lips on the camera. I'll give you a thousand dollars. I didn't see it till afterwards, but it's so random. It's so random, man. It is so random, but yeah. it's Boosie. It's Boosie being Boosie, It's Boosie man. being yeah, Boosie, yeah. so it's just like, and then, you know, he did my all-time favorite record, Set It Off. Set It, it Off, One man. of my favorite records of all that's, time. You, that's top 10 down south yeah. fucking club record, man. You're not, yeah. that, when you do, like, they were waiting on that record, and when he did that record, oh, my God. I mean, who who starts a song out that says, you want to talk shit, you want to run, run your, your mouth? mouth? Like, who, <laughs> like 
You want to know what I'm bumping on 285? Like yeah. when, I'm, when, I, when I'm stuck in traffic, exactly. I'm bumping Boosie. Right, right, you know right. what I'm saying? Shout yeah. out to Boosie, man. Boosie, I love you, man. Yeah, man. Boosie, much love. Thank you. <laughs> he also did a meet and greet with uh, one of our sponsor, Rap, Rap Snacks. Snacks. Yeah. Was amazing on that. If you think Chris Brown meet and greets are dope, Boosie just put that. He's been doing that years ago. You and not know to mention, Rap Snacks told me last year, Boosie has the number one selling chip. Yeah, he does. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? The, and now that he created the puffs and that, like, it, the, Boosie's in the chip business, man. <laughs> he's, in the, he's in the chip business, bro. Yeah, Chips, man. alcohol. Whatever per, it is. Uh, cologne. That boy said everything. He's doing it all, yeah, man. Yeah, man. All right, uh, let's keep going, man. Yeah. You got Huncho. You got ATL's man, the new ATL sex symbol, man. Right, ladies right. love Huncho, man. They, low, ladies love Huncho. A man of few words. Mm, yeah, he ain't going to say shit. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't, hey, I ain't saying shit. I ain't doing no interviews. Yeah, but I'm gonna go on stage and I'm gonna give you these these records that they, the fucking ladies love. Boosie's yeah. made, uh, Huncho's made great records. Yeah, um, and really a dope moment. And I reposted it. Is somebody from his team took a picture from Georgia State two years? Oh, ago. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and the stadium holds forty thousand people, and there are literally three hundred people in the stands. Yeah. Yeah. Huncho's performing in the middle of the day, and he's like, lots changed in two years. Yeah, facts. To having a super moment in a dope yeah. space right and, there. And our digital team, they did a um, kind of like a thread of about five or six photos. Yeah. And uh, another one of those posts that are probably over 100,000 likes now yeah. that, you know, and it's all women. The women yeah. love them, man. And, you, know, you so. know, not to mention, you know, just to let you know if you're wondering, like, how many – when it comes to unique impressions, that kind of thing. I think we're like 13, 14 million now. Right now. Up yeah. in there, a little bit yeah. south of 15 million. Yeah. But these things keep growing and keep growing oh, and yeah. keep growing. Yeah. And we had amazing coverage from, you know, People Magazine. Um, oh, uh, uh, Atlanta Journal-Constitution, Double XL, Source Magazine, Vibe. Yeah. Um, Shade Room, Spiritual World. Spiritual World. Um, Hollywood Unlocked. Hollywood Unlocked. You know what I mean? And it just keeps going and going. Yeah. Not to mention what happens is – you know, then people start sharing their own stories. Right. And then, shout out to my guy, Jermaine Dupree. Oh, man, know, J.D. Who says the next day, <laughs> and, you know, Jermaine has been having this, J.D.'s been having this um, this joust back and forth with people. Right. Arguing about not understanding um, the dynamic of how radio still plays and Correct. The, the downloads of music sales these days. Hot 1079. Radio station sells out a show. How does that happen? Right. I guess people don't listen to the radio anymore. Right. Being facetious. Being, being facetious. You know what, yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's like, you know, to answer your question, you know, if you want to know, it's a combination of all things. All of it. Yeah. Yeah. But the narrative of people don't listen to the radio anymore is bullshit. Yeah. And so, you know, you just got like, not true. We have every research, reports, everything like that, that, that will tell you you're lying. Yeah. You know, but once again, it, once again, you just got people that were like, oh, you know, people don't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, our advertisers think so. And you know who else thinks so? The record labels think so. Absolutely. And you know who else thinks so? The artists think so. Think so. And so if, if it's three out of the four dynamics, meaning you on your personal, I, right. you know, I mean, if you, my space page talking about something we don't listen to. Yeah. Like, all right, you got it. So, okay, I mean, yeah. and, and my last thing that I say about this, like, you know, J.D. is uh, is somebody, is an artist, is a creative person. And Correct. Is somebody who has, you know, so many dope accolades. He's a friend, he's a friend of the radio station. He's a friend of mine. Yeah. I've known him for a long time. Um, And I can also say J.D. was actually the first person to welcome me to Atlanta mm. when I took the job here gotcha. four years ago, So which was cool. But he's, you know, he does things – because he likes spirited debate. Most definitely. You know what I mean? Most and definitely. I will say this. You know, artists, people, listeners, if you play this, listen, I love Spotify and Apple Music too. It's my new music discovery. But guess what? Radio is the ultimate cosign. Most definitely. Still to this day. Definitely. Ask artists why they want to be on the radio because it's the ultimate cosign. Right. When you're on the radio and you're an artist that gets money for shows, yep. it's the difference between a $5,000 show. Yep. When you're on the radio... It's a twenty-two thousand. Exactly. Show, okay. Exactly. So I'll just end the conversation like that. It's the ultimate. End it like <laughs> that. It's, it's the ultimate. Like that. It's the ultimate cosign. Right. Um, man, so many surprises on the show. You know, working with Lado on her team, and you know, the running joke is, I don't know what we're gonna do next year because, man, she busts her ass to promote the show. She did, like, man. She did a. Listen, man. You know, when you get an artist like that, especially like with me, I handle I handle a lot of the, the stuff on the marketing side of it. When you have an artist that's Join to the hit with you and we're promoting the show. It just makes it so much better, you know. And so from the the day of, I don't even know if we talked about what 
the day when we announced Lotto and she was supposed to be up here and she was eight hours late. Three hours late. Three, three hours late. And it almost worked out better for us. It did. That moment was it so, did. like, it was, what we were doing was so produced. And then because she was late, it was just so organic. Yeah. Um, From that moment until the day of the show, she has been vested in promoting birthday bands and promoting her performance and promoting making sure that people knew, hey, I ain't got no tickets. You better go buy them. Yeah. Like she just did a wonderful job at being she was a partner, being a partner with yeah. us for this for this year. And I would that to me now, she is now the recipe that's for the status quo, yeah. For, that's, headli- that's, for a headliner for our show. That's what you have to do. And then, yeah. you know, she shut she shut the office door. We were in there talking to her and she said, Listen, and she was very, very um transparent. She said I know y'all are taking a chance by giving me this opportunity. Right. And we went back and forth. We had a lot of people that told we us. We did. We don't, went. don't book a female headliner. Right. I can tell you as a guy that's been in clubs all my life, a lot of times people do not pay to see female artists. Exactly. It is very, very hard. Exactly. And now you got Megan and Glow. I know. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. The dynamic it, has changed. And has the shifted. dynamic has changed. It has shifted. Like, yeah. Because you got the sexy reds. Yep. You got so many, you know what I mean, like big, big artists. Yeah. It, the, the game has changed. It has changed. In the last three years, it's changed. Most definitely. But she sat... And she told us, and she said, listen, I know y'all are taking a chance, and there's a lot riding on this. Right. But I'm going to do everything in my control. I'm going to go harder than anybody, and I'm bringing everybody with me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that and that she did. So, yeah, she did. She, um, I mean, when I say everybody, and listen, she brought everybody. <laughs> but logistically, if uh, other stuff had worked out, she would have yeah. brought everybody else. Yeah. So, like she was not playing, yeah. You know what I'm saying. And she had a list with more people on it. Um, you know, I, I will tell you when we had the list of everybody that was going to be on correct her set for yep. a few weeks. Yeah, you know what I mean. And yep. they pretty much stuck to it. They yeah, they did. They did. I think one of them that didn't show up is super pregnant. I get it. Yeah, you know, what she I'm was saying? pregnant. One of them um had a show and a contract she yeah. had already signed yep. in Philadelphia. Yep. Um, one of them was uh had a show with what our, our, our company. Yeah. In Richmond, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't like they didn't want to do it. Yeah. Shit, the one in Richmond was trying to get out of it. Another one had a, <laughs> another Atlanta artist supposed to be on herself had a death of a close friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, no, she stuck to it. Like, and what you don't see, and the reason why we're saying she stuck to she stuck to her list is that, you know, if somebody submits you a list of artists two months before the show, we're like, okay, yeah, let's see it what it looks like right. closer to the show. Cause, you know, promises are made and things of that nature. Yeah. But no, like Literally, if she submitted a list of 15, I think 11 of the 15 actually were there. Mm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I mean, you know, Savage came out. Um, Summer. Him doing Red Rum and, and then bringing out yeah, Summer, Summer and them doing the record together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Summer, she looked amazing. Yeah. You know what I mean? My wife really saw her in Bucket and Target a couple weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then she was like, oh, she looked much better on Yeah, stage. exactly. You know yeah. I mean? I'm like, I don't know. She was in Target. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. And then, of course, um, you know, her choreography and – the things in between, um, you know, the production, you know, the cryo, she had confetti, yeah. she had, um, you know, a lot of choreography. Yeah. She had yeah. A, a, a wardrobe change, which is very hard to do. And very rare. I don't think, then, I, I've never had a wardrobe change nah. in birthday bash. Never. Nah, so. And then, you know, Lotto is a, you know, Lotto is a lyricist. Lotto can rap. Yeah, most definitely. Lotto can rap. Yeah. It's not like she's going to just get up there and sing hooks. Right. And right. she's going to dance. And of course, we knew Usher was coming. Right. Um, because yeah. there's a certain security protocol, uh, protocol when you have to do these things. Exactly. Um, and Usher is a very easy person to work with, but it just, you have to raise your level of everything. Exactly. You exactly. Like you had to, I mean, it was, what, two security details when it came to Usher. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a. Uh, walk through with with our security that we hire and his security, they they work well together. They work together, but there was a security walk through that none of us were even part of that had to be done. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, it's a it's a whole nother level when you have a somebody of that magnitude, uh, being a part of the show. You yeah. know, and like keep in mind we've like the biggest thing is my brother asked me. He was like, man, how long did y'all know Usher was gonna be on there? And I was like, man, we known it for like at least two and a half three months. He was like, yeah. The fact that nobody else knew and y'all kept that a secret is <laughs> like, cause that's I mean, Usher. You know I saying? mean, let's y'all know a little secret. So the thing about Birthday Bash, though, like, I guess it was a month ago or so he was in town and they went to um, Red Martini on a Wednesday. Yep. They got a record together. It's yep. like, 
you, you can kind of use yeah, context yeah, yeah, yeah. clues to figure Cause out. Because I took that video from Red and, Martini and, you and I posted it. it. And you reposted And I didn't say anything. And, I just said, hmm. And if you don't think she did that on purpose, you know, to kind of let y'all know no, that, like, right. look, look, I know dude's got 10 tour dates coming up. Yeah. But, man, it's birthday bash. And for him, talking to him afterwards, it's like, you know, he's done birthday bash. Right. In a right. couple of different, you know. Um, a different spaces in his spaces life. Spaces in yeah. his life. Yeah. And, you know, for him to give back. He's in that space. Yes. Where he's basically – Showing love to other right. Atlanta artists, Most you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I knew this was happening because I already knew about the Usher tribute at BET. Right. She was doing Usher tribute. Yes. That was the trade. That was the trade, yeah. That was the trade. Yeah. And also, saying? too, like, I was, I just remember, um, you know, Usher is signed to Gamma now, and Troy, Troy Marshall, who, yeah. he was like, he came, he was like, man, that was a dope moment for Lotto. But he also said, yo, Usher needed that moment, too. Oh, yeah. You know no what I'm saying? No so doubt. he was like, like, like even though you're the like I always call him, I you know I, I think I was telling you and Jay Chris like I call it the big three Michael Prince Usher, even though he's part to me of that big three, he's like yo I'm still I'm from Chattanooga but I'm Atlanta yeah and birthday bash is Atlanta yeah so if I can I'm going to do and be a part right. of Atlanta history so yeah. yeah and then he's been on his award tour I think he was in Vegas which is totally I'm not gonna say resurrected his career but I think what it did is it co-signed his place in superstardom yeah. to a lot of people. Yes. And we were talking about this is there's not a lot there's not a lot of ushers left out there. There's not. That have that raw talent. It's not. You know what I mean? It's, it's a, yeah. the list is, is very small. So he's very calculated in what he does. Yes. And he did remember he came in, he did radio and he did all of our stations. He yep. did he did NCA, he did Hot, he did Ryan yep. Show, he did everybody. You yep. know what I mean? Which is like a real dope move for That's, him. Yes. Like he under like Man, like, real talk, like, they're probably, right now, when you talk about what an artist is and supposed to be, he's that definition of it. Yeah. Like, he's not, I'll do, lo yeah, I do local radio. I also do syndicated radio. I'll do birthday bash, but yeah. I also do BET. I also go do the Grammys. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh by the way, I did Super Bowl a month ago. Right, you know I, yeah, I mean? and I do do Super Bowl. I'll go do Vegas, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I also go do my tour. Oh, I, you know what? I'm also going to go do Essence Fest, too. Yeah. Like, he is very smart at yeah. making sure that he hits everything, you know, no yeah. matter how big the name Usher is, yeah. you know, and you just got to give him kudos and give him credit for that, man. And yeah, that's just a, that's a, that's a, that's why BET gave him that, that award. I've seen know? him in a million different um, spaces talking about Usher. Um, um, I remember he opened up or he was, when Kanye was new, Kanye was his opener on a tour. Okay. You know what I mean? But I'd seen him. Through the years, but I, I'm just saying that to lead up to his whole operation. Shout out to DJ Mars, like the Vegas show. Yeah, I hope they incorporate. Yeah, I'm some of that. I'm thinking that's probably going. to Well, I hope there's got to be a segment with somebody the, who with didn't the go to space. Vegas, and I heard about how good Vegas is. I'm like, I hope this tour is a representation Man. of that, just a bigger scale. But yeah, I hope I hope that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I'm I I got to figure out. We got to figure out, and I know people are asking. Went to LA last week for BET, which is an opportunity for a victory lap and to see everybody and say thank you. And everybody's talking about the show yeah. on a national platform, on a national level. Um, we got the shout out on the BET Awards. We did, man. We did. Which was major. I mean, it's, it's, this, it won't stop. People yeah. are still talking about birthday bears. Still, like, it's still being yeah. mentioned. It's still being, you know, discussed as far as the magnitude of it and having the first female headline and the fun people had. And it's, Usually, you know, we'll see a die down in it, you know mm. what I'm saying, a week out. But now we're almost like two weeks out. People are still talking about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, sponsors are ecstatic. Sponsors are, sponsors are signing up now for next year's show. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, like, honestly, we, we you know, we turned some doubters. People doubted. When we announced a lot of people, some people, even sponsors, they were like, Fact. man, I don't know. You know, but it just proves again it's about the moment. It's about, it's the, about show. the moment. It's about the show. It's, it's about the show. You know, it, we appreciate all the artists, but whatever you think that artist is going to do, they're going to ratchet it up times ten when it comes to yeah. birthday bash. So, um, and we always kick around a wish list. Obviously, um, I mean, I could tell you three artists on the top of my wish list for birthday bash. Mm -hmm. um, very hard to do, very expensive, and I get it. They've earned that right. I mean, Chris Brown, who has his own tour, yeah, um, Future. Yep. Um, and then now, you know, maybe four, maybe Kendrick. Kendrick, yeah. And um and Drake. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we didn't damn, we didn't even mention the Drake tour. I told when him was we talking about tours. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That hit too. Yep. He bumped folks up for a couple few hundred dollars, you know. What right, I'm right. Tore their ass out the frame. <laughs> <You know laughs> damn sure did. Damn sure so, did. 
it's like, I don't, you know, we're going to continue. We love the feedback. Keep the feedback coming. You know, let us know who you want to see here on Birthday Bash. Yeah. You know, some ideas. I think. And we know it's going to be some people that be like, man, I want to see Tip, Jeezy, and Gucci. Okay, yeah, we can't do that every Birthday Bash. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I, okay, we get it. We get it. Shit. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. You know let's what I'm talk saying? About, let's talk about two other artists on the show. Let's talk about the Oomp Camp and DJ Monte set. Man, listen, Which man. I wanted to say for last to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. Shout out to them boys, man. I, so, you know, we'll keep it transparent, man. Like, this is the first time we ever kind of gave the set reins to somebody. Yeah. So, meaning that anytime you've seen a set, when you, when we did Birthday Bash 25, we had that Atlanta set. You know, we, we put that set together. Uh, we, the 50 years of hip-hop set. The 50 year, year yeah. hip-hop set. We put that together. We produced that. So this is the first time of us like saying, hey, all right, here go. Whatever we're going to give you, put your set together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they did a really good job of trying to make it work. It was supposed to be it – was, it was some moments in there that they really wanted that we just couldn't make it work logistically. Yeah. But I think – We can that, talk about them. Yeah, yeah. I, okay, so we can talk about, you know – Monte, so Monte wanted T Pain on T Pain was man. It was it was done. It was we done. Just, it was done. But he had a show. Yeah. And then we would had to get fly him there private. And by the time that came out, I Devin, I was like, Devin, I ain't got no more money. I'm asked out. I was turning out my yeah. pocket. So I couldn't we couldn't financially make that one work. Um and we, I and the biggest thing was Unk. Yeah. So if you don't know anything like this, we, you know, we do our show at State Farm Arena. And Things that we didn't know that were going to happen, happen. Meaning that, so Lotto, you know, Lotto did a sound check at like, or I've never seen a headline of Birthday Bash do a sound sound check at like, well, being there like at one mm-hmm. and been there the whole day. So kind of like State Farm kind of, it messed up our numbers in the back. So State Farm was already like, hey, you already have so many people in the back. And so it, when we were trying to get artists in, it made it a little bit difficult. Cause yeah. they, they were hitting us with a what they call a five and five rule. So as people, five people come out, then five people come back into it. And so, and unbeknownst to me, because I was doing something else, because if I would have known, I would have went out there and been like, nah, he's getting in. Unk was outside Mm. and couldn't get in while they were doing the set. And so I really think that really affected the set, too. And that that, that shit pissed me off. And I didn't know know about it until after the show was over. They were like, yeah, Unk was outside. We couldn't get him in. And I was like... What the hell do you mean we couldn't get him in? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I think overall they did a really good set. Um, I think, you know, Atlanta was definitely represented. I think Oomp Camp was represented. Uh, I mean, when the last time I've seen Sammy Sam on stage. Yeah, that was bro. crazy. That you was know a real what I'm saying? Moment. Like, that was a real moment. Yeah. Um, you know, and Monte and, and Oomp are pros. Yeah. Like profess- you know, Monte, you know, he's put together a bunch of tours. He's been on tour with T-Pain forever. Right, right. But, you know, the video component was such a huge part of that set. Yeah. The music is matched up with the video. Yeah. And when Unk didn't come out on stage, you, there's nothing you can do. Nothing you can it. do. You yeah. just got to ride it out. Yep. You know what I mean? But ultimately, I think people, you know, were appreciative. There were so many people that, you know, we talked about it before that, you know, Unk and what he's done in business, what he's done for uh, the music business in Atlanta, what yeah. he's done for retail. And shout out to him. I know they're opening a burger joint. Oh really? Okay. Fantastic. Okay. I saw them in there the other day. Uh, I guess they were doing um like a walkthrough with hiring people. You know, oh, okay. I mean, we got to go okay. support support. Um. Yep. He's still always at the, still at the flea market selling jump drive mixtape. <laughs> yep. You know what I'm saying? And then um, you know, Monte, you know the T Pain thing, and it was gonna happen because when I got the audio, yeah, it was on the original. It was on audio. it. Yeah, it was on it. Um, there. and I went and saw T Pain. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then. When you have somebody pop out and they're under contract to do their own show, it gets a little sticky. Yeah. Um, you don't want to yeah. hurt their show, and they You're don't right. want to hurt their own show. Most definitely. That's why you can't promote those kinds of things. Right, events, exactly. Private jets from New Jersey to Atlanta and back to New Jersey the same night. <laughs> Yo, that thing was killing me, bro. It, 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 was, it was. 38 grand. Was, I say it. 38,000. 38,000 was a deal breaker. <laughs> like, I ain't got uh, it, bro. But, you know, <laughs> if it's 38,000 and we could have promoted it, oh, I that, yeah. changes, that changes, that the, changes dynamics. the dynamics yeah, because then people, it would help sell tickets. Yeah. But, Shout out to Oomp. Shout out to Monte. Monte, one of but my favorite guys. I'm going to say staff. this. I went to go see T-Pain the other day, man, and I was sitting there like, I got to get him. I got to get him on the show. Bro. I, we, we, he's going to be on the show in the next I two mean, years. I mean, I told you after one music fest. Yeah. I, I sat there and was just like, it was a workout. Yeah, seriously. Because it's like it's like a 90-minute mixtape. <laughs> yes. Yes. Of everything intertwined in it. If you listen to this podcast or watching this on YouTube, <laughs> T-Pain will be on Birthday Bash in the next – Two years. Two years, yeah. The next We're two gonna years, he's going to be on there. Yeah. Um, man, and then 
last but not least, uh, B King. You know, B King's a guy who's a friend B. Of, of the industry and a friend of ours and yeah. a friend of Atlanta who makes incredibly ratchet, club friendly, female friendly records that right. everybody loves. And it's like, kind of, where do you position and how do you do it? So yeah. we came up with the idea to have him perform on the front of the thrust while Lotto did her set change. Correct. Um, yeah. And I think we timed it out pretty well. Man, we timed it out perfectly well. I want to give a huge shout out to Jay Nix and Incognito. They did an amazing job of intro yeah. that set. And just getting the energy up and setting up that tone. Um, we didn't have a lot of downtime in between. We dance show did. There's not a lot of, <laughs> there wasn't a lot of, a lot of was it? you know, everybody screaming. And, and we've never had a, honestly, in my seven years of doing Birthday Bash, we never had a set change. I think we, mm. when QC sponsored it, it was literally something dropping down. Yeah. But nothing where we had a span of minutes that we had to cover. Yeah. And B King was the perfect artist that kind of set that, I mean, yo. I, t- I listen. I ain't. I never seen so much ass shaking at birthday bash in my life. <laughs> I had somebody say, "Damn, er- the whole I." If you wanted to go get something to eat during the intermission, you couldn't because it was so many damn women shaking yeah. ass in the aisles. It was you know no, what I'm no. There was no downtime. It was no show. downtime because we yeah. were actually. You know, I was. I wasn't cutting performances, but there was no downtime. Like DJs didn't. They got a chance to play, and they were good sports. Yeah, because right? you want everybody to be able to shine. But right. Man, we were rapid we were, fire. We were, we were going. And if there was any downtime, it was because we were waiting literally from somebody to go from the media room yep. or that was walking through the back door, yep. getting their inner ears ready uh-huh. to come on stage, man. But um, B. King, uh, perfect for that set. Man, awesome, man. B. We, and B. King, another one of them artists, man. I just well, If I could book him every year, I would because he's just a joy to work with. Yeah, and we had, we, had two, we had two other opportunities to put a couple more artists on the show yeah. in, in that part. You know, yeah. the, the vision was to do – you know, you know, represent your city, and I know Inc. and um, and Nick's were screaming out different cities, right? Yeah. And I got two phone calls very last minute. Yep. Uh, we just couldn't work it out. I was trying to get money back since he was in town. I had a, pr- a project that just dropped to come out at that moment. Right. Um, and Big Boogie at that moment. You know oh, you're missing one, too. Who was that? JT. Oh, yeah, and then JT. We yeah. were trying to work on JT. Yeah. Trying to make that happen, too. And, you know, the other phone calls we get from artists is just amazing. You know, it's just like a huge – you know, amount of respect, and I could give you five, six other artists that call within a couple of weeks that want to jump on the show, and that's like the ultimate compliment. Yeah, most definitely, most and definitely. They may not feel the hype in March, but they, they yo, but that yeah. couple of weeks before, they like, hey, yeah. how can we be a part yeah. of this? You know, what I'm saying it's it's great to get those phone calls. A lot of times, it's just too late, as you know. We are, we're our show is jam packed. Um, we actually, I always tell people, we over. We, we we have way too many artists on our show we for do. the time that we, we have do. allotted. We do. But we figure it out, you know what I'm saying? And and the, every artist probably wants 10 minutes more mm. than what we give them. Uh, but I actually think it's really good that we give them like 10 or 15 minutes. That means it's just all hits. Yeah. And they leave dog-ass tired and sweating, but the audience <laughs> does too. You know what I'm saying? So, like, um, but, yeah, it's always, you know, those artists you like, man, I wish I could have got on there. Uh, but you know, we always keeping them in our back pocket, and yeah. we all we're like birthday bash. We're working on birthday bash, twenty twenty five. Now we're already talking about it. So people know? are asking, you know, how are y'all going to keep the podcast going when you know leading up to birthday bash? Okay, I got it. Yeah, you, you had special guests, and we got other special guests. Yeah, lined up. we got Ray Daniels who's going to come sit in with us. Yep, uh, we got Tip. We're trying to work on Jeezy, some other people that have been a part of the show in big moments right. of the show. But I think next t- next podcast, um, next week or the week after, it will probably need to talk about. Our challenges and some things that went wrong. Oh, most definitely during the show. That's yeah. a whole show. That's a entire and, and, show by itself. And like I said, it's a you know, it's I, I can say when you know you're a pro, when you may cuss somebody out or raise your voice, right? And afterwards, you it's can loud. hug it out and yeah. say, "Man, I appreciate y'all." Yes, you know what I mean. Yes. No, no hard feelings. It was all business. Facts. We got through it. You know, yep. you guys did an amazing job. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's just. Part of it, but I think that may be our next episode to talk about kind of like what our challenges are. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. We can talk about, um, you know, what we're optimistic about next year for the birthday bash. What is what is one thing that you want to do for next year's show that we weren't able to do? I know what you're going to say. I, mean, oh, been, do, do I, I don't want to say it. We've been talking about it at nauseum. So you want, do you, want I mean, you, don't have to be, you can be vague about it. Oh, okay. Say. Yeah. So um, our stage will look different next year. You want to bring people even closer. Yeah. Our stage audience. will look different next year. I agree. Yep. I agree. Now, you know, my wife hates when I talk about sound and lights and <laughs> stages. Like, you know, she don't give a shit. She right, right, right. I mean? yeah. But when you go to these concerts, watch the production, and you can tell what kind of budget 
and how much money they want to spend on these things. We spare no expense. Correct. Can I put the number out there and just kind of tell people? Yeah, you got to put it okay, out there. Okay, I mean, you, you know, it's upwardly. It's Lamborghini money. Yeah, yeah. Easy. Yeah. And I want to say this, too, because there's other radio stations in Atlanta that do shows. They're not doing 30% of what we're doing production-wise. No, no, facts. But it, it matters to us, your experience. And, your, and it's so funny because somebody might say, well, this year, we're gonna bring that up on the next the next uh would you, when we go record this whenever the hell we record the next one we're gonna bring it up because there was a transition in sound I want people to know this so we had it at one point and then somebody else took over yeah. this year and so if you comparing it there was a difference yeah but yeah it it wasn't the upperly hundreds and hundreds of thousand dollars that we we spend mm. that makes sense um so yeah. yeah. It makes a difference. Yeah. Um, we can also talk about, I want to talk about next episode. We can, you know, people asking, are we going to get into the streaming business? Um, and, and we can talk about that. And yep. Shout out to Lotto and her team and they streamed on YouTube. Yep. Um, you know, it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother category. Whole nother beast, you know I mean? but something that we're, you know, we're yeah. definitely actively looking into yeah. and trying to figure out how it works for us and for our show. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people want to see the show, but obviously we want people to come to the show. Exactly. We want people to be a part of the experience. Yeah. And, um, um, you know, we're always looking for ways to elevate the show. I Most think definitely. it's one of the things we want to do. And, I mean, you said it the other day, we got to change the stage. Like, we got to. Yeah. What, we've done a couple we, different things the last few years. I was like, no, I'm, I'm you know, I'm yeah. with you. Like, yeah. we had some ideas of some things that we wanted to do. But, right. you know, number one, when you move things around and you put extra things in there, it costs money. <laughs> it costs money. And it takes seats out. Yes. You know, but you want to. Yes. You wanna, and this um, year we did, you know, like, you know, this year we added a thrust. You know what I'm saying? There was something yeah. that we. We kind of we did at Georgia State, yeah, and then we brought the state form. I definitely think it was a win. I definitely think it was a better experience for, for people. Uh, you know, we're always. I just want like Atlanta know or anybody whoever goes to the show. We're always our first thing is how will it benefit the ticket buyer? Yeah, we just want them to have a great experience, man. Yeah. Like seriously, a great experience. Yeah, no, I agree totally. Um, you know, one of the things that we are kicking around the idea is. Who's Hot event, we did it at Domain this past um, um, year, and it was amazing. BHMPZ, um, you know, Jay Locke, everybody that was yeah. at that show. OJ the Juice Man. Right, you know what I mean? right, like right, It right. was crazy yeah. out there. But one thing, we're kicking around the idea of doing a – Got to do a – A festival stage, got to, got to block do party block type party, situation. Yeah. It may be abbreviated. Yeah, and we hear you. Like, Atlanta, we hear you. Yeah. We know y'all want it. We know, you know, we you, you feel like that part or that audience – and when it comes that the people that will come to that type of show, they you you feel like you're not being serviced. We hear you, mm. and we're always trying to figure out ways. Unfortunately, in Atlanta right now, when you talk about trying to do something close to the venue, it's just not a lot of options. Yeah. And uh, the option we 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 use for years is no longer an option. Well, it's not an option this year. Maybe next something will change next year. So, but no, we hear you, and we're trying to figure out a way to make sure that a dope ass free pre-show happens in yeah. 2025 